वेलकम ऑफ यू इन द रेणुका इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ नीड्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर सुशील नाइक टूडे इन बायोलॉजी टॉपिक वी विल टॉक अबाउट ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड थ्रू ब्लड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज फॉर्म इन द टिश्यू सेल दैट इज ईच एंड एवरी सेल ऑफ आवर बॉडी इन इट ड्यू टू सेल्युलर रेस्पिरेशन द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड फॉर्म्स दिस कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज ट्रांसपोर्टेड टू वर्ड्स the respiratory surface and that is lungs of our body the co2 from the tissue cell is transported towards the respiratory surface in three different forms and this one in the form of by carbonates nearly 70% carbon dioxide is transported in the form of sodium bicarbonate through blood towards the respiratory surface nearly 23% carbon dioxide is transported in the form of carbamino compounds that is 23% carbon dioxide is transported towards the tissue cell in this form and in the form of solution nearly 7% carbon dioxide is transported towards the tissue cell so it means forms of co2 transport are bicarbonate form solution form and carbamino compound form now first in the form of solution remember that co2 release from the tissue cell enter into the blood plasma and react with water to form h2co3 that is carbonic acid and in the form of carbonic acid this carbon dioxide is transported from tissue cell towards the respiratory surface through the venous blood this carbonic acid is transported through blood is on the 7% this condition which is vital if the ph of the body were high there is no conduction of carbonic acid more than 7% and it undergo ionization after that into h plus and h CO3 minus. Now, carbamino compounds. Remember that in the blood, in RBC, this carbon dioxide reacts with the hemoglobin, which is a kind of protein. It has NH2 radical inside it. This carbon dioxide reacts with the NH2 inside the hemoglobin to form carbamino. hemoglobin inside the rbc which conduct the carbon dioxide towards the respiratory surface but along with that in the blood plasma certain amount of carbon dioxide react with the proteins present in the blood plasma again it has nh2 radical with it so to react with the nh2 of the protein to form carbamino protein in this form carbon dioxide is transported towards the respiratory surface is nearly 23% in some references 20 to 25% range is given in form of bicarbonate remember that sodium bicarbonate form inside the blood plasma during the transport of carbon dioxide from tissue cell to the respiratory surface that is lungs bicarbonate is always form in the blood plasma first we talk about the reaction in rbc at tissue cell surface remember that in rbc carbon dioxide react with h2o to form carbonic acid again but this process is rapid in the rbc with compared to that of blood plasma because carbonic and hydrase enzyme is present in the rbc this is the same khb that is potassium hemoglobin which carried oxygen from the respiratory surface to the tissue cell surface in the form of khb o2 oxygen is transported that we studied earlier oxygen enter into the tissue cell and khb remain in the venous blood and this khb now undergo ionization to form k plus and hb minus 
as more H2CO3 form in the RBC to maintain pH this H2CO3 undergo ionization to form H plus and HCO3 minus. Now look here in the RBC K plus HB minus H plus and HCO3 minus form it induces ionic imbalance in the RBC at the tissue cell surface to remove this ionic imbalance in the RBC from blood plasma which contain NaCl, Cl minus come outside and enter into RBC and react with K plus to form KCl and this process is called as an chloride shift and also called as an Hamburger's phenomenon. So, Hamburger was the scientist to observe this chloride shift that is transport of Cl- from blood plasma to the RBC at the tissue cell surface is called chloride shift. Why this chloride shift is required? So, there are main two reasons. First, I already explained and that is for the removal of ionic imbalance and the second important thing is that if K plus react with HCO3 minus it form KHCO3 remove that in the form of KHCO3 carbon dioxide never transports because KHCO3 is a highly alkaline it is a strong base which increase the pH in that case RBC absorb water from the surrounding blood plasma and RBC swell and may burst this is called a hemolysis. For the inhibition of the hemolysis and to remove the ionic imbalance in the RBC chloride shift or Hamburger's phenomenon is required. Now HCO3 minus which form in the RBC enter into the blood plasma and react with Na plus to form NaHCO3 in the blood plasma. So, remove that sodium bicarbonate always form in the blood plasma. Now, reaction in the blood plasma at the tissue cell surface. Again the same carbon dioxide which come outside from the tissue cell enter in the blood at the tissue cell surface and react with water to form carbonic acid again. This process is a slow process as in the blood plasma there is no carbonic anhydrase. When more than 7% H2CO3 form, it undergo ionization as I told you earlier as it induces reduction in the pH of the blood. To maintain the pH, blood plasma contain some blood buffer components or the compounds and this is disodium hydrogen phosphate. It is a blood buffer to maintain the pH. This Na2HPO4 react with H2CO3 to form NaHCO3 plus NaH2PO4 and so again NHCO3 that is sodium bicarbonate form in the blood plasma again. Some amount of H2CO3 also react with sodium protein complex which is present in the blood plasma. During the transport of Cl- into the RBC certain amount of Na plus remain in the blood plasma before reacting with HCO3 minus certain Na plus react with this protein to form sodium protein complex and this sodium protein complex also act as a buffer and maintain the pH by reacting with H2CO3 to form NaHCO3 and HPR and that is a reduced protein. So, this way NHCO3 again form inside the blood plasma. Now, in the RBC, KCl is formed, H plus and HB minus also react with each other to form HHB and this way we do have KCl and HHB in the RBC and NHCO3 in the blood plasma and this KCl, HHB and NHCO3 now transported towards the respiratory surface through the venous blood. So, from tissue cell surface KCl and HHB in the RBC and NHCO3 in the blood plasma are transported at the respiratory surface.
and that is inside the lungs. So remember that at the respiratory surface in RBC, this HHB that is reduced hemoglobin react with oxygen to form HHBO2 and that is oxyhemoglobin or oxyhemoglobinic acid. This oxyhemoglobinic acid induces ionization of KCl in the RBC to form K plus and Cl minus at the time in the blood plasma NHCO3 is present. Students NHCO3 contains 70 percent of the carbon dioxide which we want to transport and exhale outside. To dissociate the NHCO3 Cl minus from the RBC re-enter into the plasma to form NaCl and HCO3 minus re-enter into RBC and react with K plus to form KHCO3 and this way the process called chloride backshift occur at the respiratory surface from RBC to plasma Cl minus re-enter. Now this HHBO2 and KHCO3 react to form the different components here H plus and HBO2 minus K plus and HCO3 minus react to form KHBO2 and H2CO3. This H2CO3 form at the respiratory surface undergo ionization with the help of carbonic anhydrase enzyme to form H2O and carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide is exhaled outside. This KHBO2 transport the oxygen towards the tissue cell again and this way transport of carbon dioxide is carried out. Another important thing the entire process which occur in the RBC at the respiratory surface was first observed by the Halden and that is why this removal of carbon dioxide when oxygen is entered into the blood at the respiratory surface is collectively called as an Halden effect. Simply Halden effect is a loading of oxygen and unloading of carbon dioxide at the respiratory surface.